You guys ready? Uh huh. All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Self Helpless. I'm Kelsey Cook. I'm Taylor Tomlinson. I'm Delaney Fisher. And this week, oh my God, I'm so excited to talk to this guest. Dude, Holy shit, we got the poo doctor. Poo doctor. <laughs> yeah. In the house. Yeah. <laughs> we are oh. going to be joined by, um, can you say his name correctly? Dr. Anish Chef. Anish Chef. chef. Wow, that's a ton. That word. is a ton. <laughs> Anish sure. Chef. Mm-hmm. Um, he is the author of the critically acclaimed book and huge, widely popular bestseller, What's Your Poo Telling You? Yes. And the other book, What's My Pee Telling Me? Yes. You guys have heard of it. He's been on uh, Rachel Ray. Yes. Uh, the Doctors. Yeah. All the daytime talk shows. I'm. I'm going to be honest, I have been so excited for him for a while because, yeah. like, I remember when this book came out, I purchased this book oh and I saw him on all these shows and I just thought he was incredible. <laughs> and nobody was really, like, talking openly about poo like that. And that's yeah. a lot of that. I was still having so many of my own digestive issues. Yeah. And I just. I loved him. Like, yeah. I connected oh. with him so much. He's the superhero we need. Oh, we my need God. We need to, like, take the shame away from Pooh. We need to talk about Pooh. We did. And when I found out that he wanted to be a guest on Self Helpless, I literally shit my pants. <laughs> I mean, I mean, not literally. Um, maybe Kelsey did. But um, I, seriously, <laughs> I, I, I remember texting you guys, like, oh, my God. You guys. Yeah. It's the Pooh doctor. I'm a Pooh doctor. It's the Pooh doctor. <laughs> I've never felt more excited to use the Pooh emoji in a text thread ever. <laughs> I was like, this is so appropriate. And I just, I feel like <gasps> Pooh gets brought up so often in our podcast. Yes. Because we're oh, three yeah. classy broads. Yeah. And I just feel like it's destiny. Like this was meant to be. That we would so have to be. the poo expert on self-helpless. So uh, our interview with him will be in just a little bit. We're going to do a couple of our segments. And then we will be talking with him. And I'm so excited. Oh, yes. Um, so we have a quotable. We sure oh, do. Wait. Hold on. I'm sorry. We have our um, our sponsor. Oh, yeah. And there was a, an incredible email Oh, my gosh. We have sponsor. to read that email. Yes. Yeah. Please, um, Lord. One of our listeners did sign up. Yes, BetterHelp.com. We've had several listeners sign up. Actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And we got the the first great. round of numbers in, and we're just delighted. I'm so glad that you guys are excited about BetterHelp.com. Um, it's a great service. It's basically therapy that you can do from your phone. You don't have to go into an office. Um, it's 24/7, 365. They have financial um, help options, which is awesome. And uh, Delaney, you said that you are about to sign up for it. Right? Yeah, I cannot wait to dive in. I've been like knee deep deep in dick lately so i haven't gotten around to it but i'm hoping this weekend and I she can means schedule her business oh, yeah. by Delaney for, by Delaney. if you're the yeah. listening for the first time like where's Jesus Cam? Christ. Yeah. <laughs> whoa i always forget i always forget that like people search podcasts by the topic yeah and haven't been following from the beginning yeah, yeah. and so i'm like oh geez i gotta get better at that you guys yeah. my bad oh but my this God, email so uh is from lauren it says hello my name is lauren i'm 18 years old i've been listening to your podcast for a few months and after listening to your loneliness episode i decided to try out betterhelp.com i've been dealing with chronic stomach pain and health issues caused by a candida yeast overgrowth or candida in my stomach which we're gonna talk about yeah um and i've been searching for someone to talk to about it but i was too overwhelmed by the thought of trying out a new therapist in person i just got done talking to my online therapist at BetterHelp, and i feel i have a second mom now oh Oh, so nice her daughter deals with very similar health issues to me thank you for recommending betterhelp.com and thank you for bringing all of us hope it's funny because because I feel like I've created these these images of each of you. And after listening to your stories, uh, it's weird to finally see your faces on social media. Maybe Aww. I should start watching your videos instead so I can put the faces to the stories. Most importantly, Kelsey, you're my spirit animal. I deal with <laughs> candida overgrowth and allergies slash sensitivities as well. Oh, what's up, s- girl? <laughs> <laughs> Soul sisters. Um, also, Aww. your throwback Instagram post about public speaking class made me die of happiness. <laughs> I sent Aww. it to all my friends. Thank you for all the realness and your funny jokes. You all rock. Love, Lauren. Lauren. Dude, Lauren. We thank love you. you. Um, awesome. Like, yeah, this is, I love BetterHelp. I cannot wait to really yeah. dive into it, but it already has incredible reviews. Anything that you research about it, it's like the top, uh, it's the top one. I don't yeah, the top put, therapy app. Yeah, I don't want to put down um, the others, but it's yeah. getting incredible reviews. And I noticed that um, they really care about therapists with a lot more experience than maybe some right. of the other starter apps or the other yes. apps out there. So you're getting a very experienced professional when you sign up with this site. Yes. So if you're interested in checking it out, it's betterhelp.com slash selfhelpless. Uh, you can start communicating with a therapist in under 24 hours. Uh, you have to be 18 or older and um, it's available worldwide. Boom. So it's great. 
Yes. I love it. Thank you, BetterHelp.com. Oh, yeah. yes. Great. Okay, Isn't now. It always, like, funny to get those emails from people who are like, Delaney, Kelsey, whoever, like, whoever's name it is. Yeah. You're my spirit animal. And then all the stuff they resonate with, and you're kind of like, whew, ow. Oh, ah. Are those all the things you remember about me that I grew up really scared of God? And oh. I have poo issues. And, <laughs> you know, like all that kind oh, of stuff. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. It's the vulnerabilities that unite yeah, us. Yeah, I love well, it. Because nobody would ever write in and be like, I'm just like you, Delaney. I'm a badass entrepreneur. <laughs> like, nobody would do that. Everybody always connects with, like, I too poop in bike. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, man. man. All so right. Great. So you have a quote? Dude, found this great quotable. Here, are you guys ready for this? We're ready. Yep, okay. We're ready. Having a low opinion of yourself is not modesty. It's self-destruction. That's oh. by Bobby Summer. I like that. Boom. Oh, my goodness. Dude, that's, that's like own the confidence. Yeah. You're the shit. It's that fine line. You don't want to be an asshole. You don't want to be cocky. Right. But like, you also don't want to be like, I'm worthless. No. Yeah. You want to find that in <laughs> I'm worthless. Find the in between. That was the broiest insecurity. I'm, <laughs> I'm just worthless, bro. <laughs> Fucking nobody. Don't bro. see that chat. <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely a chat. That was oh, very man. funny. Yeah, what yeah. would the in between be between worthless and cocky? I think Co- like a cock- quiet, a I'm quiet good. confidence. Quiet yeah. confidence. Yeah. Just like that you know that you got your shit down. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm fine with me. I'm fine. I'm with, fine I'm with fine me, with duh. Me. We've already discovered uh, what the happy yeah, medium in a nutshell. Is. I'm fine like, with me. I feel like I ricochet between like, I'm the best thing that's ever happened <laughs> to anyone who knows me. And then like, why does anyone keep me around? Like, I feel like I go between extremes a lot. That's just, I think, being I mean, human. Is it? Do just... you feel like that? I don't feel like you do. <sighs> yeah, I don't Yeah, I don't, do. I don't get. <laughs> I, don't I don't think you do either, do you? No, you guys are very with your perfectionism. Confident. Maybe you get really down on yourself with your perfectionism. Yeah, but right? I'm always oh, yeah. down on myself. I don't oh. have that swing oh. into being. You like, don't have the happy go. swing, is what you're saying. No, or unless I'm high. drunk in Vegas with a pound of makeup on, and then I'm like, I'm Beyonce. Like oh. I feel great, but that I mean, in my day to day life, I generally swing way more toward like I'm worthless. Really? <laughs> yeah. I, didn't I feel know like that. you get more frustrated with yourself about your perfectionism because when I've talked to you in those moments, I feel like you're still like it's so frustrating because I know I am this, 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 and this, but um, I feel as though yeah I am this, 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 and this. So I feel like even in those moments, you have a good head on your shoulders and you know, like I know I am very talented and hardworking and beautiful, but right now <laughs> I am frustrated as to why this opportunity is not going the way I want. Yeah. Or, you know. Yeah. No, that's that's true. I do feel like in my core, I do feel like you know, like I got my own back. Like I know, yes. I know who I am. I know like what my talent level is. Like I feel pretty certain about those things. But I think on a day to day, I can let a lot of like external things yeah. make me mm, feel affected. bad. I have to fight against them a lot. Yeah. 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 And you said you're kind of up and down constantly. I think so? I'm up and down but maybe i'm not maybe i'm over maybe i'm over exaggerating i feel like i'm pretty up and down and i will have moments of like you know just uh, i don't know even like this thing that this project that we're all working on where we all have to be kind of confident about things i'm like "Mm, i don't know if i'm going to i'm like worried about coming off as confident as the two of you Really? Yeah, I am. Just because that I feel like so blows fun. our mind because you're a fucking rock star. That's very nice. Right. But it's always hard. I to feel like it's gonna be harder for people that we are trying to uh, sell this project to, to which this is just how I feel. This is not necessarily true, but I feel like it's right. gonna be harder for them to be like, oh yeah, she seems like she knows what she's doing, as opposed to you two, where I feel like you two are more like, yeah, no, this is uh, this is it, and everyone's like, well, yeah, no, but you that's trust just them. an attitude. Yes, that's just, right. And you have, I know you have that attitude. Yes. I know you can be like, I'm the dig shit. Dig it out. Yeah, like, dig, dig it, it out. out. Find yeah, her. Find that shit. Yeah, dig but that, I think, but we all we all suffer from imposter syndrome, right. which we're gonna do an episode about that topic alone eventually. But yeah. um, I think yeah. that's just what that is. Yeah. And, yeah. I'm in a good place oh. with stand up right now, though. Oh, good. Like, that's great. I had some great shows in San Jose last weekend. Thank you so much. Uh, to the people who came, uh, shout out to Jessica for bringing me a mummy roller. So, so cool. nice. You put it, apparently you're supposed to put it behind your ears and on the bottoms of your feet and it makes you sleep like a mummy. It's essential wow. oils. She made it for me. That's oh my gosh. So, I love it. God, so, so nice. Sweet. Beautiful souls out yeah. there. Yeah. It's amazing. It's so but I've been cool. going up a lot and I've been doing a lot of time and I'm like, feel like i have a lot of newer stuff and i'm like feeling really oh good. that's great really that's good. the best yeah, yeah i feel like i have a pretty even keel i don't know if i swing so much high and low my energy swings that way but i feel yes. like a pretty steady i guess confidence yeah but it's just like medium confidence i don't feel overly confident and i don't no. feel underconfident 
Hmm. I just feel like you're I'm okay. Very secure. I'm okay. I feel yeah. secure. That's a yes. better word for it. I feel secure. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. good. All right. Nice. Yeah, just a good little check. I feel like maybe, <laughs> and it might have something to do. Did you feel like you swung a little bit more when you were performing all the time? Because I feel like that's hundred percent. I feel like that's oh, what it is for us. A I was thousand percent. Just gonna say, if yeah. I go like a week or two without performing, that really levels out. Yeah, it's just like day to day being a normal person. And then I remember Bill Burr talking about this that in his younger years of stand up how he felt about himself as a comedian was completely based on the crowd's reaction to him. Right. Where if he had a good set, he's like, I'm a great comedian. If he had a bad set, he's like, I should never do this again. Yes. And oh, wow. I, I mean, it gets better every year, but I still, I wish it didn't affect me so much as it still does where it's like, oh. you know, like I can have a great set and feel like, oh, I'm a pro. I'm, I yes. got this. And then if I have a bad set, I'm like, wow, I really don't know what I'm doing. I should just really, yeah, yeah, yeah. it really it hits me hard. Wow. See, I, I didn't swing in that way in that regard. Like I felt like I could be pretty objective about my sets and stuff like that. But what was what was happening is the if I wasn't performing, I was just happy because performing wasn't making me happy. Oh. And when I was, yeah. even if the shows were going great, I wasn't super stoked about it. Yeah. About, like that lifestyle. But I was objectively be like, ah, that was, you know, it was kind of an off uh, off night. This was not my type of crowd or like, hey, that was a pretty good set or whatever. But I didn't let it yeah, swing me too much about like my own kind of mm. voice or performance level, I guess. Yeah. But it, but definitely my emotions were swinging just because of the act of doing what I want to do, doing something that I felt like yeah, I man. should do or obligated to do or like that, that, um that outer expectation that whole thing mm. which we we eventually need to really dive into the four tendencies because that book yes. really helped yes. me get out of the you know the doing the shoulds versus the wants you know and that's and different than the four agreements which we talked about with Jim yeah Florentine. the four tendencies well, we'll keep, keep a little brief stuff but we'll definitely i think i i want to read our what you guys read the book because it just it helped me so much oh, not, I want even, to. not yeah. even just like a trendy topic it is great um, there's four different tendencies, uh, as, as far as the book says, the obliger, the upholder, the rebel, and the questioner. Mm. And so like the, uh, the obliger can meet outer expectations, but they have a hard time keeping promises to themselves. Okay. The upholder can meet outer expectations and inner expectations for themselves. The questioner just kind of questions everything. They want to get all the, the facts and information before they make decisions. Um, if they think something is stupid, they don't want to do it until something somebody tells them why they should all that kind of stuff yeah. cam is one of those um and uh <laughs> <Just sorry. honoring. laughs> yeah and then yeah honoring. very and then the rebel is somebody who has a hard time meeting outer expectations and inner expectations mm. they almost have to trick themselves into taking care of themselves that's kind of the gist wow. um i so i found out i'm an obliger where i can really i can hold up the outer expectations yeah but i have a hard time keeping promises to myself got it so that's why I over like i choose Choose work over exercise and yeah. eating healthy and all that stuff because I'm like I'm worried about letting this person down, but mm. I can let myself down. I don't care. Yeah, got it. So we got to do that. Soon. It's so good. Yeah. It's so good. Um, but yeah, <gasps> let's do have some it. treat yourselves oh, in self care. Yeah, yeah. I have the biggest treat myself, do which it. I've been dying to say on the main podcast. A movie. Woo-hoo! She did it, you guys. Yeah. Yeah. I did it. <laughs> Kane and I found an amazing, super nice apartment, and honestly, I have to like really thank you listeners because it wouldn't it wouldn't be possible without um without this podcast and without the patreon and you Mm -hmm. guys um supporting us and like it it truly has impacted us and it's amazing like you guys don't have to be on the road as much yeah like we're being it's able to real. dedicate the, yeah, yeah this is one of the first times where i'm seeing this like real tangible um change in my life because of the podcast uh in terms of like finances where i this was like two episodes ago I was on our loneliness episode you guys can go back and listen where i'm like oh we want to move but i don't know i'm worried yeah. about money and you guys were so sweet and you were like come on like you should just do it it'll make you feel better you're in a you're living in a situation where you don't even feel safe at that apartment no. and i just was living in so much fear and when I went back home to Cheney and I was helping my mom pack, something just hit me and I was like, I can't live in this gray space anymore of like not knowing whether or not we should do this. Like, let's just fucking do it. Yes. Yeah. Let's do it. I have faith and like, and let's just make this happen. And we are moving into um, our dream apartment. It's yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Ah. Like it's, it's as close to getting a house as we could get 
but still an apartment. You know what I mean? Like it's yeah, it's spacious and yeah. beautiful, and it has a washer and dryer unit and a dishwasher. Oh. And <laughs> that that I've been is hand washing dishes for four years. And <laughs> my fingers are so sick of being soggy all the time. I'm pruned. I'm just so excited. <laughs> oh. Yes. So I'm sick of hoarding quarters for the fucking washer and dryer. Like I'm just. Oh, thank you, listeners. Thank you guys so much for. Yeah changing our lives yeah seriously so. and like the fact that you guys don't have to be on the road as much is really giving us more time to dedicate to all of our long-term goals with the podcast yeah like we have some exciting stuff coming up that we're really yeah. looking forward to sharing with you and that's all because of of your support of the fact that we can actually get together more often we're seeing each other so much this week working on stuff um, because there's not that pressure where you guys have to be out every single every single weekend on a plane twice a week. Yeah, like, I still am. It, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you're gonna get there though. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so yeah, yeah, incredible. So excited. That's my self careless. My self careless is: Do I need to be on the road as much? No. no. Am I still? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Mm. <sighs> it's fine. but you kind of we'll love it. No. No. I mean, <laughs> I, it's Sorry. tough. It's here's here's <laughs> my issue: is Kelsey took you were home for what two months this summer? Where you didn't you didn't have to get on a plane? Oh, that was a month that I was home. That was a month you were mm-hmm. home. Okay. So I I don't know that I have done that since I started doing comedy. Uh yeah. and I'm afraid that if I do it, I won't be able to go back out there. Oh, so not true. Really? Yeah. So not true. Shit just keeps coming. Yeah. No, 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 no. It's not that I'm afraid I won't have opportunities. It's a f- I'm afraid that my own mental oh, that you health won't, won't allow me oh like i'm the afraid way that i'll you dread felt. it yeah like the way you felt when you went back to wisconsin or wherever yeah. you had to go at the end of that month yeah i but that i'm but, afraid that i'll feel that way because whenever i'm home i'm like oh it's so nice but i'm i'm just scared i'm scared i won't be able to to make myself do it anymore would you be as satisfied if you were like well you're past at every club here so yeah, do the local stuff yeah I would know. you feel as satisfied just going up a bunch at night in town or do you feel yes. a need okay it's the money that. thing i feel the need to always be making money because i'm if i'm not making money i'm like well it's all gonna dry take, up take money out of it yeah assume, oh, okay assume, well then yeah that would be great okay, okay. then that's so what then you, you have your answer yeah. that's what you but do but also if I'm not headlining, if I'm not, if I'm just staying in town, I'm not doing, you know, hours of material. Like I'm not on stage for as much time as you are on the road. But I assume that you would still, it's not like you would stop going out forever. You would just change it Do into less. like once a month maybe or yes. twice a month. But um, that I think tells you everything. You're yes. acting yeah. out of fear. You're like keeping yourself going yeah. so that you don't <laughs> like. Stop forever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right, like yeah. that's. Which won't happen stand-up is in you girl it ain't going anywhere and yeah. um what's the point of having making good money if you're not around to enjoy it right you know that's what i'm saying It'll that's how i feel there. about looking at like because i'm also i'm looking at apartments right now and for it's me it's all happening it's guys. all yes. happening and it's like I, there's just so much in me that's like well don't spend too much you should spend only that and then i'm like you could do you could go higher than that you're just too a- afraid that what i don't know your career is gonna blow up like i don't i don't know what i'm afraid of but i'm afraid all the time to it felt so afraid. good to like not be afraid and just say yes to get in the apartment i have yeah. to tell you i had been had been so depressed i've been like legit depressed for like over a month and i hadn't really talked about it with you guys yeah. i've just been kind of like pushing it away but being unhappy where we lived yeah and that affecting me every day but not having the confidence to move Ooh. That was a bad place to be in. Yeah. And that yeah. fear that you're in right now of like, duh, like afraid to make a move. I tell you, like once you just pull the trigger and like do something, it feels so good. Mm-hmm. That's true. It did feel good this week too. Cause I got back from San Jose and was home for like a night. And then I was back, you know, like it, I, between I'm barely at my place between the, I'm usually at the road on the road or at Kyle's and it's like, it's just it's not comfortable and i don't feel like i have any home base and oh. at like 2 a.m the other morning i couldn't sleep and i was just like i'm setting up all these apartment appointments like yeah we're gonna look at good. six in the next two days good good, like, good i can go by myself if you want me to he's like no i'll come with you i'm like all right well i'm going so yes, it, yeah. i have to do it because i can't do this anymore good. and i had told my sisters like oh i can move whenever like maybe december january and i've been telling everywhere i'm like december 1st or november 1st like yeah, yeah anywhere around there and i'll work it out with them like we'll yeah. figure it out because i i cannot i i can't stay where i'm staying it, it feel even when i am home i feel like i'm being just smothered by that 
tiny apartment mm, far yeah. away from Breaking everything. Home. And the commute is so crazy for you e- almost it's every insane. single day. I think you should try the local stuff for now. I think so. Why don't you just try it out? See how it feels. I'm booked out through the end of the year. That's the thing. Like I'm booked the way my schedule is right now. I am booked um, through through March of next That's year. That's insane, Taylor. I know. Taylor, listen. Look at your <laughs> schedule. Look at your schedule. You know the shows that you can cancel and you know the shows that you need to keep. Why don't you take an objective look at that? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> And then stop booking so many fucking shows. <laughs> Mama Delaney, <laughs> man. It's hard I'm because sometimes in. you can't say no. <laughs> but listen, but why are you not saying no, though? Because it's, all, okay, I have, well, there's something I can't say on the part. Do you remember the thing I told you that I was doing yeah. part of? Now they're asking me to do the whole thing. Okay. Which is being oh, gone way more. That it's exciting, great. but yeah. we'll get, I'll Can tell you, you guys some details just off the podcast. that and not do some of the other stuff then? Well, it's already, I mean, it's, I'm booked on some of those days that okay. I'm going to do this other thing probably. Okay. So I, that's already being canceled. And it's like cutting into, I was supposed to take a vacation with my family and it's like cutting into that a little bit. Yeah. But I told them, I was like, I did this. This was a good treat yourself. Okay. I said, okay. I was like, is there any way I can go to Cancun with my family for those three days instead of going on this work thing and they're getting back to me on it? Um, but I didn't just go, yep, nope, I'll do that. Screw that's you, family. Good. Yeah. That's, just, good. that's good. That right? is good. good. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. I think, uh, but yeah, like Kelsey said, once a month just to try it out when you can. Yeah. Which is hopefully soon. Yeah. Once a month out of town and the rest, there's so many great local things that you could be doing that you're still getting up and you're just not fucking killing yourself by traveling constantly. And once you have your amazing place with Kyle, bitch, you're going to want to be home. Oh my gosh. Yeah. You're not going to, like, because right now, it's almost like the road probably feels better in certain ways than coming back because you, like, don't have a home base. Yeah. Yeah. Once you get a home that you love, I mean, like, shit, if I already didn't love being in town after this apartment, I'm going to be like, I am not going oh, anywhere. That apartment is so great. <laughs> I'm so excited. Oh, my gosh. It's I'm so nice. I'm still 12 days away from moving, and I've already, like, completely packed everything. Oh, yeah. I'm just like, get me out of here. I'm, like, oh, dying to get out. Dude, I was packing shit up at our old place before we even got an apartment. I was <laughs> ready to get the hell out of there. Oh, did I tell you how many clo- I got rid of, like, half my closet. Because I was like, I'm, Fantastic. I Hallelujah. Yeah. Yes. I love it. Um, oh, man. Dude, uh. I feel like I should really quickly just talk about the Candida Candida stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, just a, a little bit because I haven't filled people in on yeah. this. Uh, we've talked about it on Patreon a little bit. But Kelsey convinced me to do the Candida <laughs> diet like for reals. And I did it. And it's been awful but amazing. So um, yeah. I went on Accutane like you guys know for like six months or so. And then a few months after being off of it, all those little bumps started coming back just like nothing had ever fucking happened. And I right. was um, feeling terrible and I, I didn't want to go back on Accutane. It's a pain in the ass if anybody's ever done it. You have to get your blood drawn once a month and take a pregnancy test and all this bullshit. And I uh, didn't want to go back to that. And deep down, I know, I know the root of the problem is mm-hmm. my diet and yeah. my bagels and all and the I've things been I love. And you <laughs> for so long. <laughs> yeah, I know. Kelsey's been telling me, and I, and I, I knew that Accutane was probably just going to be a band aid, and then it uh-huh. pretty much was. So a fucking dramatic band aid at that. that. Yeah, it's a big thing to do Accutane. Oh, it is, yeah. and it it, it works. But nothing's but bigger for you. Yeah. It's <laughs> not eating bagels. <laughs> exactly. I was willing to go on this drug, hardcore yeah, drug. Yeah. It's the band aid equivalent of wrapping yourself up like a mummy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it's the second time I've done it in my lifetime. I did it over a oh decade ago. God. So. I decided I would do the candida diet. And if you guys have done it, I, I'm so sorry. My heart goes out to you. And if you <laughs> haven't, Jesus Christ, it's it's fucking miserable. But yeah. I can tell you by day four, 70% of those bumps on my face were completely gone. That's and crazy. by day eight, they were all gone. I mean, yeah. look at my skin. It looks fine. It's yeah. crazy. It looks fine. And I wish I had done this instead of going on six months of Accutane. Yes, mm-hmm. I had a great time because I... I ate everything I wanted. Um, oh but God. all I've been, really been doing is I, I cut bread. <laughs> Just a moment of silence for that. <laughs> um, I've cut bread and dairy pretty much out, most grains. And then if you're doing like really strict stuff, there's like certain vegetables you should be eating and not eating and certain oh meats and stuff like that. There's a lot of research. Go, go do the research. If you have these weird little bumps on your face, you have to try this diet at least for a couple weeks 
to see the results. Yeah. So now I'm in the point where I've seen the results. Shit is gone. There's no more bumps on my face. It can it, it completely cured it. I yeah. mean, I'm still in shock. Yeah. Um, and also upset. I was I was happy and sad at the same it time. Is. It's, it's very bittersweet. It's yeah. so bittersweet because I realize, okay, it's in my control. That at least yes. you know this. I know there's a lot of skin stuff that is not in your control. There's hormonal stuff and there's all all kinds of things. But this really is, and I know that I'm gonna have. To, it's a lifestyle change I have to make. Yeah, which was very sad. Um, what so, grains are you doing now? I w- haven't been doing grains. Oh, you so haven't. So I'm at the point where I'm going to slowly incorporate things back. I've cheated a couple times with cake and <sighs> nothing happened. When you had cheesecake, nothing happened to you. Nothing happened to me with cheesecake. I was super stoked about that. I am I'm sure. Okay, if you do stoked. this diet for eight days and you don't see results in four like Delaney, just know that Delaney is a freak of nature freaking <laughs> blessed yeah all right but don't expect that they say that it doesn't completely go away for 90 days like that so i'm just telling yeah, you yeah yeah but i know it's back. hard yeah, yeah. But if you start to bring things in yeah because your ass is being impatient yes i am then it's so. gonna it might come back and yes you might have to do it again so i tried that piece of cake okay i was fine okay i'm like okay maybe that was a fluke okay so a few days later tried another piece of cake Okay. It was fine. So you did the candida diet for eight days. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, sitting here, I'm sitting here fucking like four years into this shit. I haven't had bread or cheese for four fucking years. Oh, bless like, your I did it for like 10 days. And then I had cheesecake. And I'm like, I want to murder you. I can't yeah. believe that. Well, yes. So, but I'm thinking that it's really the bread that is my problem. The bread and grains. Because I haven't really incorporated grains back in. So I have a feeling that's the cause of it. I have okay. not. I had a little bit of fried rice and I was fine. You think it's a gluten thing? Fried I, rice is not a. No, it's not an issue okay have i have yeast, not though. had bagels yet i have not had a cheeseburger yet i'm gonna have some experimental cheeseburgers coming up and i'll report back to what happens okay but so far i have been cheating a little bit and it hasn't okay. affected i think it's the Can fact you feel my rage from yeah there? Can you feel so, so, but you have like tortillas <laughs> and rice because that because has they don't no have yeast, yeast. Okay. No yeast. okay but like I cut bread everything. and cheese is a nightmare. I went super strict for those. Yeah. yeah like a couple, okay. couple weeks. I've been really pretty strict. Um, but I am ready to incorporate some stuff and see yeah. what okay. happens. You guys, this diet was so hard. I cried in my shower. <laughs> like, I, it was like day two and a half. And I was crying because I fucking love food. I, yeah. I, I have an addiction to food. I think I can admit that. Um, but I mean, I plan my day around food. I plan all my meals out. If I know I'm going to a restaurant, I'll look up the menu ahead of time, yep, look to see what's same. on it. I plan it out. Oh, I tell Cam, like, I want you to get this and I'm going to get this and we're going to try each other's. Is yeah. that food addiction is a huge or is thing. it just enjoying food? Uh, sure. Foodie. Absolutely. Yeah, I've, I'm, I'm not a, like that. I'm a foodie. Um, I don't yeah. think I'm addicted to food, but sure. you have a different background with it. I do have a different yeah. background. I, um, yeah, I definitely, you know, binge eating and things like that. So I honestly think that I had those results so quickly because it was such a drastic change. Right. I yeah. mean, you guys, I, you know, I was eating like breakfast burrito, hamburger for lunch. Right. Pizza. Whatever the fuck I wanted. Crushing bags. Yeah. Crushing, crushing the bagels bags. on a, on the regs. <laughs> so I think if you're already eating moderately healthy and you do it, you might not see those drastic results. But I saw, I mean, it went from A to Z. Right. Yeah. Right. Or whatever the fuck. Zero to 100. Zero to 100. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. Yeah, People see. get it. <laughs> A for apple, A for, um, so yeah, uh, oh, anyway, I, I really, I, I hope that, uh, if you're having those weird bumps, you, you got to try it. It's the fucking worst. And you can hit me up on Instagram and all the, you can reach out to me if you're having a bad time with it. I, I feel your pain, but I wish somebody would have told me like, look, uh, you know, back then and six months ago, like, look, if you just do this diet, yeah. you're going to see yeah. some improvements without having to do all this other well, bullshit. I did tell you that. I know. Listen to me. Yeah. I wasn't listening to Kelsey because I wasn't ready to admit it to myself. Yeah. <laughs> so if you're in that place, just know you're not I alone. I wish somebody would have told me, bitch, I told you so many times. <laughs> so Get the true. fuck out like of Kelsey here. Kelsey was like, have you tried the candida diet? She wasn't like, bitch, you need to do this. Yeah. Well, what, you know, it's a, thing, it's a touchy like, thing. It is a touchy thing. But yeah. eventually you're like, wasn't yeah, trying to get you, you to should do this. claw my eyes yeah. out. I know how you feel about bagels. <laughs> Don't take them away from you lightly. Jesus Christ. <laughs> but yeah, she has been gently pushing me and I finally yeah. was so fed up. Yeah. I did it. <laughs> well, so proud uh, beautiful. Yeah. Good. Thank you. All right. Shall we, uh, shall we get the poo doctor on the line? Let's, Let's get the do poo this. doctor up. Ready to roll, baby. All right. We'll be right back with the poo doctor. Woo. Yay. Thank Yay. you. 
We are so excited uh, for our guest today. We have Dr. Anish Sheth with us. Uh, he's a gastroenterologist and author of What's Your Poo Telling You and What's My Pee Telling Me. He's been on The Doctors, Rachel Ray, all that good stuff. I got to be honest, Dr. Sheth, I am a little poo struck because I, <laughs> I, uh, I not only owned your book uh, from years ago, like I, I've known who you are for a very long time. So I was so excited <laughs> to have you on our show today. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah, thanks for having me. It uh, should be fun. <laughs> yes, we we are so excited. Uh, we have definitely talked about poo and um, stomach issues and all that stuff in the past. Yeah. Uh, so we have so many questions for you. Uh, but maybe to kick it off, uh, can you just tell us a little bit about how you got into um, this specific uh, aspect of the medical field? <laughs> yeah, the glorious uh, the glorious <laughs> world of poo. It's very. Uh, <laughs> It's very prestigious. That's that's the first thing. Um, Every no, child's I I, dream. <laughs> exactly. Well, I, it does actually go back to childhood. I actually blame my uh, my father because, believe it or not, this was a topic of discussion at the dinner table when I was growing up. So no way. Uh, I always thought it was normal to discuss uh, bowel habits and, and, and you know whether it was a you know a good one or not a good one. And, uh, I learned from an early age that uh, it 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 took <laughs> you know your bowel habits went a long way to saying what kind of day you had and how much energy you had and whether you felt good and what your diet was like. And yeah. so who would, who would have thought, you know, all these years later, we would have written a book about it. But I, I think that's, that's, uh, the credit slash blame, I think goes to my, uh, goes to my family. Wow. Amazing. I love it. Kelsey, do you want to kick yeah. off? I know that you have so many questions. I have so many. Like, th I feel like everything you just said to me makes me feel like I've known you for years just because like you're like a kindred spirit to have like all these this poo fascination because I've just had poo problems my whole life. <laughs> this is so funny to talk about. I love talking about this. Um, so I have um, IBS and Delaney and I have talked recently about both having a uh, candida overgrowth and I did the candida cleanse about four years ago and it it did help my IBS um quite a bit but I still have it and um I wondered like what what are your top recommendations for dealing with IBS yeah it's a great topic and, and and I think it's it's a great thing to speak about because uh it's such a common issue especially for young women and you know the studies show that on average um people who suffer from ibs will actually wait two to three years before they actually see their doctor to discuss their symptoms and so i think it's really good to get the word out and you know people try a lot of things on their own and, and there's obviously a lot of resources online but i think there's also a stigma and sort of an embarrassment factor with the subject matter and so people just they don't talk about it with their physicians so i think it's good to talk about so i mean ibs is super common it's a combination of abdominal discomfort and bowel habit changes whether it be constipation or diarrhea yeah uh, it really starts with two things in my in my eyes one is diet which we can get into and the second is actually probiotics so mm. we learn more and more about ibs and everybody's different but one of the common features is that there's definitely an imbalance in the types of bacteria, the healthy versus unhealthy bacteria that we harbor in our intestines. Yeah. And I think it's really an easy thing. There's very good studies now suggesting that certain probiotics that are out there helpful are helpful specifically in IBS. And the good thing is that it's over the counter. There's very little downside. There's no side effects. And that's a good place to start if you have IBS. And then the second thing is diet. And diet gets a lot of press. And there's the gluten-free diet. And there's the, you know, all kinds of diet. There's the low FODMAP diet. But I think if you look at an individual and you sort of speak with them and learn about their symptoms, I think there's some benefit for most people with certain dietary modifications that, uh, again, don't have any side effects. So if you can do this without prescription drugs and you can get better, in my eyes, that's a win. Yeah. Okay. That's we amazing. Need, I need uh, you to settle a debate amongst us yes, about yeah. <laughs> probiotics. Uh, mm -hmm. because we've been told many different things about probiotics yeah. and it's best to yeah. get it from your food, that it's best to take it in pill form in capsule form in powder form. And yeah. my biggest question is, does it need to be refrigerated or not? Because it depends. It depends on the formulation. So, the, okay. so it depends how it's, it depends how it's processed, how it's prepared. And there are very good studies suggesting that certain proprietary name brand probiotics 
have a shelf life of you know several months and they don't need to be refrigerated and they've actually shown that in studies where they say all right there's a billion colonies of x probiotic and a month later at room temperature there's still a billion colonies of probiotics there's other ones that are formulated different that are in different forms where you have to refrigerate them and so mm-hmm. it, it all depends on the way it's it's made and how it's processed one of the big problems with probiotics is that there's literally hundreds of probiotic products out there yeah, and because they're, so because they're not regulated by the fda they don't need to prove you know as long as when they make it there's 10 billion colonies they don't need to do most of them don't have to do the studies to suggest that there's still 10 billion by the time it ends up in your mm-hmm. you know in your body and so i think that's one of the problems is that you want to stick with a probiotic where they have done those studies where they're tried and true where there's clinical studies showing that it work that mm-hmm. it worked are there any brands that you yeah what do you take yeah, yeah what is you... a specific thing you recommend yeah so i mean i, th- I think if we, if we i think the real point here is that you know probably 10 years ago where we just would say okay just take this probiotic take that probiotic it was sort of kind of a blind statement but now when i recommend a probiotic for a patient i ask them why they're taking it and i ask them for instance if they have ibs then there's certain probiotics like um like align is one in particular that has been studied in ibs culturel there are certain ones that have been studied if you're taking it for general health purposes it's probably less important which one you actually take as long as again you're taking something that has the colonies that you need um, and they're actually active live bacteria it probably doesn't matter if you're just doing general health but it's like it's like an antibiotic you can't just go there and take an antibiotic it kind of depends on you know what the problem is and i think we're learning as we learn more and more about probiotics we're getting to that level of deep yeah yeah uh i love uh your approach with uh like somebody with ibs um i myself was diagnosed when i was a teenager with uh, irritable bowel syndrome but i ended up growing out of all the symptoms so i really think it was the overgrowth of candida that was giving me all my symptoms however when i went to go see a doctor all they did was prescribe me was antibiotics which made everything so much worse um can you talk about how why is it that a lot of medical professionals don't really treat candida overgrowth as a real problem yeah you know i think a lot of it comes down to the bias um, of medical training i think you know part of what sorry dr sheth can you hear us you're cutting out a little bit uh i can hear you okay oh, there you are. Now. perfect okay. much better okay. now sorry should i uh i think can, it's okay you yeah send you yeah Yeah. So I think one of the frustrating things for patients with IBS in particular is that, um, you know, there's certain things that have established medical science behind them that people are taught in medical school and training, and that's what they end up practicing. Uh, And Canada overgrowth, uh, among some other things, is often not emphasized. The, The studies, scientific studies are not great, let's be honest, regarding that. It doesn't mean it doesn't exist. And I think one of the things about IBS is that a lot of times doctors will just have one cookie cutter approach to IBS. And everybody that they see with IBS gets the same treatment, regardless of if they have you know, bloating or they don't have bloating or they have diarrhea or they don't have diarrhea. And what we know is that you can't have that approach. And so I think there is a role for what you just talked about. There's a role for some other things in certain patients. But, you know, part of it is, you know, if we don't have good studies that we have basically been trained and and learned about, then there's this sort of dismissive attitude towards trying new things. And and I think sometimes we miss the boat, um, Mm. you know, for some patients. And do you pronounce it? You said is candida. Is that the that, right way? I've been yeah. saying it candida for oh, yeah, like <laughs> five years, like a yeah, goddamn I think, idiot. I, I think candida is, is the correct pronunciation. But well, there you go. <laughs> it sounds less gross when you say candida. Candida, oh, right? yeah, yeah. Well, I've it heard like so candida. many nutritionists say candida too. So oh. I feel like it's you know we're not alone here. Up. Yeah. Oh wow. Um, um, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Sorry, we're all like <laughs> clamoring to ask you all these questions. Um, so with IBS, a lot of uh, people recommend like that you're supposed to have all this high fiber because my mine tends to be more constipated. So people are like, mm. oh, I have a lot of fiber. But then sometimes that leads to that feeling of almost like 
stop start where all I feel like all of a sudden I have to go and then like hardly anything comes out or too much fiber can lead to diarrhea it just seems like I never know how much fiber and what type of fiber I'm actually supposed to be having yeah so so actually it's interesting we I never recommend fiber for IBS it's not it's oh. not something that's if you just have regular sort of run-of-the-mill occasional constipation but without the IBS part like without the abdominal pain and bloating and discomfort then fiber has a role but at, even for whether you have constipation or diarrhea, frankly, the problem with fiber, even though I, you know, I'm a big proponent of fiber for most people, and IBS, it can actually worsen your symptoms because fiber gets fermented by our intestinal tract and our bacteria. And when you ferment something, you produce more gas. And so if you already have problems with bloating and discomfort, it can actually make it worse. Wow. Uh, so I think fiber, probably not first line, regardless of what, what your bowel habits are like. Oh, wow. So what do you, I mean, like ugh, on a day-to-day basis, what are the type of foods that you would recommend for somebody with IBS? That is a, is this a loaded question. I so know. So, Sorry, that's so a lot. constipation or diarrhea? Mostly constipation. Yeah. So I think if you're going to stick with fiber, you want to stick with soluble fiber. So you don't want to have a lot of roughage, a lot of salads, a lot of green uncooked vegetables, things like that. You want to, you know, you can go online, you can look up soluble sources of fiber, which, you know, oatmeal tends to be one that's better tolerated than most. There's certain fruits that are a little bit better. If you have fruit, you want to try to take the skin off the fruit. So these really hard to digest insoluble fiber uh, food items can really kind of make it worse. Um, and then obviously water intake, uh, is good as a good star. And then I would, I would go straight to be honest, I would go straight to probiotics, uh, before I sort of start doing supplemental f- fiber and things of that sort. Okay. I was so excited for a doctor to tell me not to eat salad. I've <laughs> <laughs> been waiting for this day my whole life. I can stop eating that <laughs> shit. <laughs> no, especially if you have IBS. I mean, if you think we haven't talked about specifically the diet, but the low FODMAP diet, which is actually has a lot of good scientific literature behind it. Uh, it's low F-O-D-M-A-P. It's actually probably the one diet for which there's really good studies showing that you, know, you would put in like a fresh salad. Or sorry, Dr. Shreth. I'm sorry, you're cutting out again. Can you repeat like the last 30 seconds of what you the said? The F-O-D? Yeah, the FODMAP diet, so the low FODMAP diet, is something that has been shown to be really helpful in IBS. Oh, awesome! And and one of the things that uh, I mean, you can it's it's a long list of food items that that are high in FODMAPs, but things that you would put in a salad, for instance, many of those things are actually going to make gas, bloating, uh, and things like that worse. Okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Jeez, so yeah, much. Crazy. Um, we've mentioned a little bit about candida and leaky gut syndrome on the show before. Can you kind of explain to our listeners what candida is, what leaky gut syndrome is? I'm sure they'd like to hear it from a professional versus yeah. how we explain Or candida. It. Yeah. Candida, We're still right. saying it wrong. Candida, yeah. candida, <laughs> candida absolutely. Yeah, so, so I think the, the, the concept behind leaky gut is that when you have inflammation in your intestines, and there can be many causes of that, one can be bacterial overgrowth, could be fungal overgrowth, could be just generalized inflammation in the body. When you have that, there's these things called tight junctions, which normally keep the things in our intestines, in the intestines, um, and not do not allow them to sort of permeate the intestinal wall and enter the body. And when you have a leaky gut, for whatever reason, these tight junctions no longer keep bacteria and other things out of the body. And so what that does is you have now a crossing over of things that are supposed to be in our intestinal tract and then end up in our stool. You have a a kind of a crossover from there into the bloodstream and into the body. And when it does that, you get inflammation. And so you get symptoms, you get discomfort. People will describe a lot of what we call systemic symptoms. So not just gut symptoms like abdominal pain and bowel changes but people will feel fatigue they'll get joint pain mm. uh, decreased energy and so that's the theory behind leaky gut is that it's it's a sort of total body inflammation that arises from a kind of a weakness if you will in the intestinal lining got Jeez. it wow, wow. Yeah. i'm learning so much i know, I know. Is like, yeah. how do you tell the difference between ibs and say like lactose intolerance I mean, yeah, if so somebody that's... comes in, do you do you have to sort of have people cut certain things out before you diagnose them as having IBS? Yeah, 
It's a good. It's a good point. I will tell you that it's rare that I make the diagnosis of lactose intolerance. I mean, people usually figure that out on their own because it's right. a very, it's a very temporal kind of relationship between having a large berry <laughs> intake and symptoms, and then they should be fine in between. So that's the real distinction between IBS and any specific food intolerance. Is that IBS permeates, right? Yeah. You could have the same meal one day and then have the same exact thing the next day and feel completely different depending on a lot mm-hmm. of issues. Whereas if you're having an intolerance to lactose or fructose or something of that sort, you'll only have symptoms within like, you know, 30 minutes to an hour of eating those foods. And then if you don't eat those things, you're perfectly normal. And so I think usually you can tease it out by what the patient tells you and what their diet and what their habits are like. Mm-hmm. Got it. Wow. Uh, we uh, we talked about the Bristol stool chart. Um, this was maybe six months ago on the podcast, and we had a lot of people writing in. And I know it really opened my eyes. I hadn't seen it before. Um, what uh, I can't remember if it said it on there, but what does it mean when your poop floats? Because I've heard that that's really <laughs> bad. Like if it's like small and floats. Yeah. So the most of the time, that means you have increased gas in your stool, right? So air lends like stool becomes more buoyant when you have gas. So like it, usually it's related to again, it's not a bad thing necessarily. If you had a high fiber meal, oh. or the day before you had you know a couple you know bowls of chili or burrito or salad, that's what's going to happen, and it's not a bad thing. If it keeps happening, sometimes it's a sign that you're not digesting or absorbing fats. Uh, in your diet. So people have pancreas problems and enzyme problems. Sometimes when you have fat in your stool, it can also float. But there's a lot of other things that go with that. So most people, you know, you'll have a float, you know, we call it floaters versus sinkers. You'll have a floater, you know, <laughs> I'm like for, five a years old. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, for a day or two. So actually, if, if it is persistent, that's a good point. I mean, I think that's the, one of the take home points is that in general, like we joke a lot about it because let's, let's face it, most of the time, if something happens for a day or two, it's usually because of something you ate, you know, like right. if you had, turns out you had red stool for one day and you had beets. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. But it's usually when things like persist for days, weeks, months, where then we have to take a step back and say like, you know, maybe there is something wrong with the way my body's processing or digesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What is the healthiest poo or does that depend on the person? No, uh, well, I think there's some features that are you can generalize. I mean, we talk about pooforia in our books, which is <laughs> basically this like just tremendous, usually single piece of soft stool that comes out like oh, yeah. with, without, <laughs> without without any effort, and yeah. you just feel great. Like there's no stool residue when you wipe to clean up. I mean, there's a certain features that are not only make you feel great, but are really signs of a healthy GI tract. You know, it means it means you are getting enough fiber, you are drinking enough water, probably you're exercising, uh, and that, you know, this is really reflected by one of these sort of tremendous bowel movements. But I think they're they're not they're not the norm, obviously, for most people, even who are healthy, there's a lot of variability from day to day and, you know, stress plays a role and how well you sleep and travel and all these things are so variable from day to day that uh, it is a joyous occasion when you do have one of those scoops. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, the, tra- the, the travel poops? I'm sure you guys. Oh, my God. What Nightmare. is up with that when you travel somewhere and then you either don't shit for days or you, when, yeah. once you walk in, once you you walk into your home, it's time. Yeah. What goes? What is up with that? <laughs> yeah, travel, travel, you know, uh, traveler's constipation is, 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 a big, uh, is a big deal. Everybody experiences it. There's so many factors. The, the, the high points are, you know, change in time zone. So your normal, you know, morning cues to go to the bathroom or meals times cues to go to the bathroom are totally off from the from the change in time zone. If you're flying somewhere, you're going to be dehydrated because you're not drinking enough water or you're drinking more caffeine than you should. Uh, if you're at some, you know, celebratory type thing like a wedding, you're drinking more alcohol. You're probably not eating enough fiber. If you're like in a third world country, for instance, you're told not to eat fresh fruits and vegetables that are washed with the local water because you can get, you know, so you're just everything is totally off. Yeah. And, you know, most people, actually, that's the best time, even for folks that have no issues. And people say, do I need to take a probiotic? And I say, look, look, you know, if you're doing fine, you don't necessarily have to take one. But when you travel, that's the one time that I recommend people take probiotics for two reasons. One is to get around this constipation thing. But number two, there are actually certain probiotics that have been shown to prevent the opposite problem, which is traveler's diarrhea. It can actually help you help prevent you from actually getting infections from food when you travel. 
Oh, wow. I get traveler's diarrhea like every other week, to Ugh, be honest. You like, do? Yeah. I get constipated when I travel. Uh, I get, it's the worst. Uh, so you should both do an experiment. You should both try <laughs> probiotics when you travel yeah. and see if actually you end up okay. I take probiotics all the time. Yeah. I take it every day. I don't take them on the road just because I had been thinking that it didn't work if they weren't refrigerated, but I need to go out and buy someone's. So you're saying a line is the best? Uh, for, well, for IBS, it for has IBS? the most studies. But if for traveling purposes, actually, in traveler's diarrhea, Culturel actually ends up being the, the best one. So and that, that neither of those have to be refrigerated. So if you pick up Culturel and you start it, say, a couple of days before you hit the road, and uh-huh. then you take, it, you take it while you're traveling, it should, it should uh, I think, make a big difference. Yeah. Oh. If I don't take probiotics, I will get diarrhea. On the oh, road. Yeah. Or even at home. If I stop taking probiotics, yeah. I notice a difference now. Well, you're just a messy yeah. group that you <laughs> are talking to. Speaking of messy, is it healthier for your poop to be messy? <laughs> or is it better if it's like there's not much there when you wipe? What's the appropriate no, amount? Yeah, to- clean sweep. We want the clean, clean sweep, sweep every right. time. Yeah, that what means that mean- everything's. Go oh, ahead. Sorry, go ahead. What does it mean if it's clean sweep? Is that what you're asking? What does it mean when it's messy? Uh, it could be bad. a lot of things. Uh, yeah, well, it means the consistency is probably not ideal, right? So if you have that mm-hmm. perfect soft, not too hard, not runny consistency, then you're going to have very little residue. Uh, if you have a liquid looser stool, that's usually where the cleanup is messy. Um, even if your stool is normal, actually folks that have issues with hemorrhoids, for instance, sometimes have a difficult time cleaning up because the hemorrhoids, if they're inflamed and, and, and you know, they're enlarged, um, they can sometimes have residue on them. That's difficult to clean. So there's a lot of issues with the messiness, but you always want to go clean if you can. Wow. Oh, man. Have you like perfected your poos? Like, I know no. that's a little personal. You haven't. It's a daily battle. It's a daily really? battle. Really? It's, it's a lifelong. It's a lifelong uh, battle to achieve that on a re- regular basis. And you know, I tend. I do eat a lot of fiber. I tend to exercise. I mean, I tend to do all the things that you're supposed to. But that's just the. I mean, it's what makes Pooforia so special when it happens. <laughs> I mean, if, it, if it happened every day, then you know who would care. But I think, right. uh, yeah, I think you want to maximize your chances of that experience. But, um, no, I think, look, if you're eating well and you're doing the right thing, most people are going to be better off. But, you know, there are other people who have, you know, take medications for other, you know, medical problems or who have other issues where, you know, their GI tract just moves a little too slowly. And, you know, you try to help them as best you can to, you know, maximize their diet and, and, you know, give them things and that can help them out. But, you know, these, these issues like we opened with like IBS and chronic constipation, I mean, literally tens of millions of people in this country struggle with this on a regular basis. And so it's so common. And I think people who like you guys obviously are all friends and you all talk about it, but there's so many people out there who have just kind of very daily debilitating um, GI symptoms who don't get help, who don't talk to other people because they sometimes feel like, you know what, it's just got to be me. Mm. And uh, that's that's an important message to get out there that it's it's definitely not. My uh, my fiance used to get um, anal fissures and then he mm-hmm. went to the doctor because there was blood in his stool and uh, the doctor told him to stop pushing. Basically, he was like pushing yeah. so hard. And yeah. so now... He takes like hour long shits because he doesn't push. He just like waits till it basically falls out. And I'm like the opposite. I'm like, I power it out and I get in it. I get on with my day. And he's like, don't do it. That's the way it should be, by the way. You shouldn't shouldn't push, but you shouldn't also spend an hour on the toilet because that actually can cause other issues. It actually leads to hemorrhoids, believe it or not. Oh my God. I'm so glad you said that. I've been telling him to hurry it up in there for seven fucking years. And now I have like actual medical (laughs) things. Just take his phone away. (laughs) I know. know. We all have our phones and it's just like, it's like this place where no one can bother us and we can just do what we want. If you got it, you got to take his phone away. He'll be out of there in like 10 minutes. Yes. Oh my God. You're fixing my relationship. (laughs) What is is the difference between anal fissures and hemorrhoids? Ah. Oh, they're very different. So I feel like I have no idea. Yeah. So hemorrhoids um, are uni- almost universal, especially in women after childbirth, pregnancy, as we get older. They're basically normal blood vessel type structures around the anus. They can be internal or external. So everybody has these veins. Um, but then with certain things like, again, pregnancy and delivery and age and constipation, they can become enlarged and they can become irritated. So 
uh, that's kind of more universal. Anal fissure is actually a cut in the lining of the sphincter muscle. So, like, right at the very end, we all have the lining, and that gets cut usually when you're constipated and straining and passing hard stools. It's super painful. It's actually in our book we talk about, like, shards of glass. Like, it really Ooh. feels like you're passing Awful. glass. And so the good news about it is it's not like a lifelong thing. People usually have it for like a week. They get treated, it gets better. And then if they have another hard bowel movement down the road, it can come back. So it kind of comes and goes and needs to be treated. But um, as, as it you know, was mentioned, basically, if you're able to keep your stool soft and not strain, it should not come back. It's not something that people struggle with sort of like on a daily basis for a long period of time. Okay. Wow. So wait, the fi- the fissure was the cut. The was cut. painful. Yeah, that's uh, yeah, super painful. Aren't. Wow. Hemorrhoids, hemorrhoids can be painful. They right? can be. They can be painful. Yeah, exactly. But that tends to be something that's again diet related, and you kind of put some creams on it, and kind of goes away. But the actual structures, the actual hemorrhoids themselves, never actually go away. Yeah. Wow. Interesting. Um, unless unless you get them treated. Wow. Uh, we've often heard that you know the gut is like your your second brain. Um, mm. because I guess it has, well, I don't know, so many neurotransmitters or whatever. Can you kind of talk about that concept and why our gut health is so important? Yeah, so there's actually, uh, we all know about serotonin in the brain. It turns out there's actually, you know, we talk about mood disorders and things. There's actually more serotonin in the GI tract than there is in the central nervous system. And and, wow. and, and same thing with neurons and things. So it's it's it speaks to the importance of psychology and mood and anxiety and a lot of these things that directly affect our gastrointestinal health and so you know before we really understood what irritable bowel syndrome was people just felt like oh it's in their head and it's just just like an anxious uptight person and this is what's happening but now we know it's actually a crosstalk it's like a communication is a two-way communication from the gut to the brain and vice versa so it's not just that okay i'm feeling anxious and so my you know I have diarrhea, for instance. It's actually the other way around as well. There's actually abnormalities in the in the in the GI tract that actually affect the way our brain works. And it's kind of wild to think about things going in that direction. And so, you know, when we treat irritable bowel syndrome, uh, we now know that we have to treat the neurotransmitters in the GI tract, and we also have to treat the neurotransmitters in the central nervous system. So if somebody, if we don't, if somebody has an anxiety issue and we don't control it, they're not going to get better. But similarly, if we don't treat the issue in the gut, like we talked about leaky gut, uh, probiotics diet, if we don't take care of that, then patients just don't get better. Wow. That is That's really crazy. Um, what's your opinion on, uh, the squatty potty? Uh, most people don't need it. Uh, it does have a good sound physiologic basis though. So it's not complete voodoo. It's basically been shown that for people that have issues with evacuating, and again, I hate to keep picking on women, but unfortunately, again, after childbirth, after, you know, a lot of pelvic floor surgeries, hysterectomies, Mm. a lot of these things, the pelvic floor muscles with aging actually get weaker. And yeah. so there are in, people who have constipation, but they don't have, it's not like their transit through the system is slow. It actually gets to the end and then they have difficulty evacuating. So straining and they have to do different things because of the anatomy and the weakness. So for those individuals that the extra opening that squatting kind of gives you sometimes is, is really helpful to help with evacuation. So for, for those individuals, I think the squatty potty can be helpful. But for the average person who has no trouble going to the bathroom on a toilet, it doesn't really add much to the whole experience, frankly. Oh, that's so Jeez. interesting. I um, I mm. won't say the whole thing, but we did a, a bonus episode recently on our Patreon where I shared a very embarrassing story <laughs> where um, my IBS flared up as it does and my uh, fiance was in the bathroom for too long and my body just it had to go as is what happens with IBS and I basically had to squat and poop into an empty box <laughs> in my apartment Holy cow. <laughs> and a Sephora box a I Sephora believe. box uh, forever ruined my favorite store for myself um but to be honest like as horrifying as that was and I couldn't believe that was happening I it was like one of the best poops I've ever had because it really did feel like 
the structure of my colon was like uh, more up and down and not so yes. bent as it is when you're yep. sitting on the toilet. I have my face That's is exactly so red right, right now. I'm so <laughs> hot in the face. I can't believe I just said it. But oh, no, whatever. you're breaking down some good physiology. I'm really impressed actually right now. That's exactly Thank what you. happens. You, straight, you straighten out the. It's actually if you want to really get technical, it's called the anal rectal angle, and actually you do. It is actually you, you straighten it out when you yeah. squat, so that's why probably through you know evolution, etc., up until the last couple hundred years, that's how you know we went to the bathroom, and there's probably a good reason for it. So, um, yeah. yeah. So again, it, it, it can be helpful if you have that outlet dysfunction, weakness, pelvic floor kind of kind of issue. Then that that's something it does actually make some sense. Yeah. Good thing your new apartment has a balcony. Kel. <laughs> I know. Let's whip out the litter box. I actually, I think doing it, pooping in a box kind of like ruined regular poops for me because now I know how much better it feels. Like it was like one of those like pooforia moments where I, I mean, I was humiliated, but also I like it was a no wiper. It felt exactly like how it should. And when I'm mm. on the toilet, even if like my body's telling me, oh, you have to go right now, I always feel like. I don't get everything out or it just doesn't feel like as easy as it should. And Interesting. So, so, do, so do you use the squatty potty then? I don't have one, but I guess I should go one. buy one. Yeah, I think you should. I mean, okay. it's not that expensive. It's, I mean, <laughs> look, it's, 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 it's not going to hurt. It's not like it's going to cause any harm. So yeah. if you have, if you've had this experience, maybe you're onto something. Yeah. You're going to judge yourself every time you go to the bathroom. But I know. I, love it. I know. You know, it's cheaper than a squatty potty, a cardboard box. Oh, <laughs> it's man. It's going to keep shit in a box. No, so great. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, I have something. So I, I recently um, went on uh, the Candida diet. I've been on it for about two, two and a half weeks. The what diet? The can- oh, so the can- Candida. It's <laughs> all good. <laughs> Either one. Uh, it's really the can't eat a diet because you can't eat shit when you're on oh, it. Anyway. Pun city oh, up so in bad. Here. But uh, <laughs> anyway, miserable, very hard diet. Uh, but the results have been unbelievable. So I had all these little bumps on my face, all those like textured bumps that are not pimples but that you know they're not poppable but just kind of just like raised flesh i guess um and all of that was completely gone within eight days of being on this diet like my skin is completely clear um can you talk about how the hell that happened after i basically just cut you know bread and cheese and most grains like fermented uh, things a lot of fermented yeah all you know nothing with yeast obviously but can you explain to our listeners like why that significant change could happen in such short amount of time? Uh, I wish I could. I think, <laughs> yeah. uh, I, no, I, I actually, it's, it's it, you know, the only way to explain it is what we talked about with the leaky gut, to be honest. I mean, there's something to be said for, there are people who have, and we can't always measure it, but have this sort of low grade total body inflammation mm. that is related to diet and i think not everybody needs to cut out gluten or uh fodmaps or this is what you're kind of talking about with the fermentable foods and things but there certainly are people who feel a lot better and it may not be the skin it may be energy it may be focus it may be uh, mood it may be so many things that they talk about with you know these diets that cut out and, and usually the common factor is again like not just fermentable foods, but mostly the grains and the carbohydrates and the gluten. Um, and I don't know that medical science can explain that necessarily, except for the fact that these are foods that are sort of pro-inflammatory uh, for some people, right? Not for everybody, but people get joint pains and they swear by the fact that if they stop eating gluten, their joint pain gets better. And we can't necessarily measure that. We can't do an x-ray to prove it. Um, but to me, it suggests that there's clearly a link between, you know, what we're eating and, and, and what the level of uh, our body inflammation is. Interesting. Wow. Yeah, that yeah. makes sense. Makes a lot of sense. Um, well, any other poo questions? <laughs> no. Oh my gosh, that was that crazy. was so informative. Oh my gosh, you are one of my favorite guests of all time. Yeah. I'm so excited <laughs> to read your book. Thank you for like straight up changing my life. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, uh, that's uh, I appreciate that. You guys have been awesome, and I think it's great what you guys are doing. I think people hopefully will listen to to this and. And like I said, just just feel comfortable. Understand that there's literally millions of people who have gastro issues out there every day, and and there's a lot of things that you know a lot of things out there that are very easy. that are not prescription medication based that will uh, I think really improve people's quality of life. 
Amazing. Oh, and uh, where can people find you, Dr. Sheth? And uh, where can they buy your books and all that plug, all the things that you want to um, promote? Yeah. So I think, um, you know, we came out with our first book about 10 years ago. We have an updated version with a lot more. We call it a double digest because it's extra thick. <laughs> <laughs> filled with uh you know more proof facts than you probably want but it's uh, oh, it's, a, it's a good re- it's a good read in the bathroom as long as you don't spend too much time in one sitting <laughs> um and so you can get it all the usual places you know it's in bookstores on amazon uh you can go to drstool.com which will take you to the chronicle books landing page and read some excerpts and um you know have fun with it yeah oh, and it's what's your poo telling you yes yeah. Oh man, it's amazing. Um, it, oh, I forgot. We I can't um, wait to get the P one. We didn't ask any P questions. Oh, that's right. The oh P- my gosh, can I have, ask you another <laughs> question real fast? Yeah, far away. <laughs> okay. Um. So, well, I feel like I already know the answers, but uh, <laughs> when your pee is like cloudy, is it just not drinking enough water, or are there other things that you can be doing? Cloudy. Well, it's either you're dehydrated or you may have a uh, urinary tract infection i mean those right. are the things oh, no. that, we, we that know. cause it yeah so um <laughs> probably better than i yeah i mean that's yeah. something that, that yeah, unfortunately also women are getting well women are getting uh it really sucks <laughs> a tough, raw deal here today but no yeah it can also be seen like in if you take certain prescription medications and supplements and things that you know we don't fully uh process that get excreted in the urine it can also lend it oh. a cloudy Oh, so. that's interesting. That's good to know. know. That. Yeah, because I I'm on the lookout for UTIs. Don't you just I trust me. <laughs> but when it's cloudy for no reason and I'm drinking a lot of water and it's not a UTI, I'm just curious as to what that is. But the supplements thing that is that interesting. That is yeah. Interesting. Is your pee supposed to smell or not really at all? <laughs> uh, again, yeah, probably not. It. I mean, usually not unless again but it's again it's very dependent i mean like i don't know if you guys have had the experience of asparagus pee but yeah oh um, yeah all the time yeah so that's something so it depends on what you eat it's like, just like this you know it's just like your stool to a certain extent i mean it shouldn't smell nearly as bad obviously <laughs> but but it's just very dependent on what you're putting in so again like medications <laughs> and diet and things will all impact you know the, the smell of urine as well okay that is so funny Ooh. oh man oh this thank was you so, so awesome much. Um, thank yeah you. it was fun yeah, we, thank you guys we uh, forgot to ask you what your favorite or least favorite quote is so if you have one feel free to share yeah it, it's it seems out of place now because it's sort of <laughs> like a kind of a thought-provoking deep quote but i, I just heard it recently <laughs> so i'll share it it's a complete non sequitur but uh, I heard it was actually by the guy that founded Taoism. So it was oh, he's oh. sort of a pretty like philosophical guy. And I, I just read it actually recently. So when you mentioned this, I thought of it. So he, um, he said, uh, those who are anxious um, live in the future. Those who are depressed live in the past. And those who are at peace live in the present. Oh, uh, we love that quote. So good. So good. Words to live by. Yeah, I need oh, that one wow. tattooed on my arm. I need to look at that every goddamn day. <laughs> that was fantastic. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Again, thank you so much, Dr. Chef. This was eye-opening. Man, and our li- are... listeners are going to go look at all your stuff. Buy the book, people. It will change your life. Yeah. Um, thank you so much for your time, and have a good evening. You too. Thank, thank you, guys. You thank so you. Okay. Yeah, bye. bye-bye. Oh, my God. That was he so is great. A... That was awesome. Butthole hero. I... <laughs> Love him, but oh yeah, this, uh, he's he's known on the streets as the Poo Doctor, so uh, uh, definitely lives up to the name. Wow, oh that was amazing. That was so great. I, oh, I'm I embarrassed that at the last hours. minute I was like, "Yeah, we're gonna let you go." Oh, but my pee! <laughs> but uh, my pee! Well, it's like, how often do you get like free medical advice? Never. Oh my god, I know. Very you rare. made me laugh so hard with your face, Delaney, when you're like, <laughs> "Should pee smell?" He's like, "No," and you're like. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay. Well, you know, like sometimes it just like smells weirder or worse than other times. Yeah, when you're dehydrated. Yeah, like Like you smell the pee smell more if you're dehydrated. I hate the smell of pee. I I don't like the smell of like asparagus pee. Oh, like I want like an asparagus pee candle, dude. (laughs) Oh God, I literally. I'll be honest. I would rather smell shit than pee. Like I do not. I do not like the smell of urine. 
I don't like yeah. the smell of men's pee. Like, no. it's oh. all like frothy smelling. Oh, because yeah, they're usually dehydrated. And, and they're, they're like, usually shooting it oh, out, peeing on like urinal cakes and yeah. shit. What the fuck do you guys do in there? I swear, it <laughs> is like a ga- It's like fucking Narnia in a men's bathroom. <laughs> they don't have um, to worry about UTIs, so they don't drink as much water. No, they don't oh, have to worry about right. anything. They don't. I kidding. hate men. I'm not trying to be a sexist. <laughs> <laughs> right. We're just gonna start this uh, one over again. Uh, okay, okay. You ready? Okay. All right. Thank you so much for listening, you guys. This was a really fun episode. This is one of my favorites, dude. Uh, yeah so good uh, make sure you're subscribed on iTunes give us a five star rating and review we're on the iTunes every every week iTunes charts amazing it's and so Spotify cool. charts yes I don't even have Spotify but I know we're on there <laughs> oh, <delighted>. it's exciting <laughs> yeah so um, tell your friends join the Patreon patreon.com slash self helpless uh, bonus episodes rewards it's so fun we love it so, we're about so to fun. record one after this yes I'm so excited um, you can follow me at Kelsey Cook Comedy on Instagram at Kelsey Cook on Twitter and KelseyCook.com for tour dates T-Tom Comedy on Instagram Taylor Tomlinson on Twitter T-TomComedy.com for tour dates I'm DelaneyFisher.com and DicksByDelaney.com is live yes, people it is. it is up and running I worked out all the kinks <laughs> shit is flowing in thank you to all the helpsters who have put orders in and, and per, you know purchased dick mugs and, and uh, cock glasses and yeah. salt and pecker shakers I love you so much I recognize the names coming in uh, to my emails when, when I you know I get an order and I, I just love you guys so much thank you for making uh, the soft launch such a success um, I'm to get more into the whole Dick by Delaney origin story and everything on like the next episode I'm really gonna explain how this shit was birthed um, but yeah <laughs> at Dick by Delaney on Instagram Facebook Pinterest Twitter yeah yay Thank you. We're so yeah. Proud of you. love you love you guys we'll talk to you next love week you. bye, bye.